broke down. We need help. Hello? Oh, I thought I heard somebody up here. Uh, sorry, but we're closed. You'll have to come back tomorrow. Our car just broke down. Do you know where there's a repair shop anywhere? <laughs> it's late. Everything's closed. You're not going to be able to get your car fixed till tomorrow. You're a mechanic. Can you fix it? <laughs> I'm not going out in that weather. Besides, I'm getting ready to go home. So why don't you two just come back in the morning, and then I'll take a look at your car. Well, is there a motel or something we can stay at around here? <laughs> Looky here, darling. You're in Podunk. Nearest motel is 50 miles from here. Well, what are we going to do? It's pouring rain out there. Look, you two seem like nice people. If you two want to sleep in my shop tonight, that's fine by me. Oh, great. So I can sleep on an oil stain? <laughs> no thanks. And it's freezing in here. I think I'd rather just sleep in the car tonight, you know? Well, suit yourself. I'm just trying to be nice. Well, I don't want to stay out there. I'd rather stay in here, if that's okay with you. What was that? Oh, that? That was nothing. Well, if you guys want to stay here, that's fine by me. If we could, please. Thank you. All right, I got you some blankets. Here you go, darling. Thanks. You like palm puppies? Yeah. Well, here is a palm puppy blanket. Oh, thank you. All right, I got these cushions here that we kneel on. You can use them as pillars. The bathroom's in there. And there's one other thing. Whatever you do, do not go upstairs into that part room. You hear me? Uh, yeah, 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 sure. sure. All right, I gotta go. I'll see you in the morning. Oh. I got a continental breakfast for you. Oh, well, let's hurry up and get this night over with so we can get out of here. Oh, 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 oh there's that noise again. There's gotta be something up there. The shop owner said to stay out of that parts room. You better listen to him. You know what? I'm going up. do some upgrades to it that I've been meaning to do for a long time so now I'm gonna do them so one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add electric start so I'm gonna have rope start and electric start which is nice another thing I want to add is some kind of log cradle to the side of this because I hate when I'm splitting wood like a big piece and the other and it's got to be split again you know multiple times and it falls on the ground and you got to pick it up so I want to make something that's going to come out here to kind of hold the log so I can split it again and I want to add like a trailer jack to the front because I don't like this I don't like this stupid pipe stand they got so I went to Harbor Freight and picked up this trailer jack that pivots out of the way. And then some years ago, also from Harbor Freight, I bought a caster wheel. Now I know they make this jack with a wheel on it, but it's some crappy little plastic wheel. I want an air tire so I can push it over rough terrain a little easier than that stupid little plastic wheel. So that's why I chose this jack. So I'm gonna take this wheel and I'm gonna weld it to the bottom of here. And then I'm gonna weld this to here. So that way I could raise it up, lower it to put it on the back of the truck and I could kick it out of the way. So for my electric start, I had to go find another engine. So I went out in the junkyard, and lo and behold, 
I had a junk eight horse that probably came off of some kind of rear engine rider that's got the right flywheel on it. So I'll pull the flywheel and the stator off of this. I already checked this starter. This starter's garbage. I'll scrounge up another starter. And I'm going to transfer all that to here. And then I'll show you how I do that. But first, I'm going to take me some inch and a half angle iron and make me a mount. Well, I already cut a piece which I'm going to weld onto here and then I weld this to that. Now the reason I'm doing that is got to be able to stay away from those holes. I don't want to get a whole big piece of plate that goes that's going to fill this up and then I got to drill holes in it. So I'm going to use this piece of angle iron so that way it stays clear of this and it, you know it doesn't have a lot of tension on it anyway so I figure I can weld that to there and then I'll weld this to that and this stupid weak this is weak this piece of channel see there's a lot of flex in there so as soon as I go to put this thing on there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to want to do this. So I wish I had another piece of angle iron, but I don't, so I found this pipe. Let me flip this up again. So I'm going to take this piece of scrap pipe I had laying around, and I'm going to trim it. I'll cut it, and I'll cut it back there. And I'm going to weld it to this. So again, triangular, triangulating it, and that should stiffen this up. And then that'll be on the other side. We'll see how that works. All right. Time to get the bandsaw out. Fire that up. Fire up the bandsaw. And cut that angle iron. Make me a tray. I fab this up real quick and welded it. So I'm going to put that right here, like this. I thought about putting it up here, but I'm like, ah, I think I like it better a little bit further down. And then I had some expanded metal, in case you don't know what this is called, with the little triangles in there, diamonds, triangles, diamonds. This is called expanded metal. It doesn't have to be that heavy duty, just enough so when I split a big log, I can put the other piece here, finish splitting it, grab this piece and split it some more. I would like to have made it bigger, but then when I go to flip it up, you know, if I made it bigger, then it would hit the tire. So, you know, I had to keep that in account. I had to allow for that. Woo. So when I weld this in, see it'll clear. Just a little shelf to help me when I'm splitting wood or chopping tires. <laughs> you see my video on this log splitter? Chopping tires. Works good for that. So let's uh, let's get this welded in, and then uh, move on to the to the jack and some of that other stuff.
Okay, I got the wheel welded on. I got my pipe tacked in. I gotta finish welding it. I got this tacked in pretty good. Again, gotta finish weld everything just in case it don't work. You don't wanna sit there and weld it all in solid and then gotta cut it loose. So let's raise it up. Pretty, pretty sturdy now with that pipe. And it also acts like a handle to grab onto. So yeah, here, let me fold this down. Okay, that clears. Yeah, look at that. Whoa, look at that bending. Still a little weak. Okay, I'm gonna add some washers behind here to kind of take up some of this slack that's in there. I'll weld them in. We'll, we'll address this later on, but at least we got part of it here. And I wanna move this. I wanna move this forward some more because it is hitting your hand here. So I'll, that's why I tacked it. So I'll bust this piece of angle loose and I'm gonna move it forward a couple of inches. And that should help with this. I mean, it's not terrible, but still you don't wanna be hitting your knuckles on there, cranking this thing. That's why, you know, you gotta come up with these solutions. Off camera, if I was doing something like this, I would cut and weld and cut and weld and move stuff and then just come back and go, oh yeah, here, see, it's all done. Like I did it the first time. It's called trial and error. I got my little excess log holder thing welded in. Got my expanded metal welded in there. Now let's flip it up. Should clear the tires, hopefully. Yep, clears the tire. All right, look out, Mr. Cameraman. Clean it back down. So that should come in handy because here's where you operate it from. I just wish I could come out a little further, but that tire's in the way. But that'll work. At least I got a place to hold it. All right, so now let's move on to starting to hook up the electric start. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this blower shroud and get the gas tank out of the way. So it makes it a lot easier to flip this up. Now on that other one I did, exact same splitter, but it had an eight horse Tecumish engine on it. And customer brought it in and the engine was locked up. And I had a 10 horse, which is real similar to the eight horse, off a lawn tractor, one of them rear engine riders. So I put an eight horse or a 10 horse Tecumish on it and I was able to transfer the recoil starter and their throttle controls and everything from the from the eight horse to the ten horse. So they were still able to start it with a rope and I put the electric start on it and they were able to start it electrically. And like I said earlier, I just came off of here, a couple pieces of angle iron, and I used the battery box from a from a junk riding mower 
and then I just use the push button and I have to hook up a solenoid because you got to have a starter solenoid and I put that on the inside over here because you kind of want to when you're when you're doing this log splitter stuff you got to remember that you know wood's going to be flying around so you want to put things in spots where you know a log and stuff isn't going to fall on it so I put the solenoid here the starter was over here so I was able to run a short lead to the solenoid the other one to the battery and then I just had a simple push button no key switch or nothing just the button you push so you'll see as I as I do all that but on that engine it was all complete we were able to swap it out this one got a full blower shroud pull the flywheel and then take the flywheel off of here and this uh, alternator because we want to be able to charge the battery while we're running the log splitter so the battery and look there's some brakes and scrap them stickers which you can get in our online store you probably didn't notice that huh until I pointed it out it looks so real like Briggs and Stratton but it's brakes and scrap them and check out the shirt I'm wearing my favorite shirt the work shirt you need to be wearing one of these shirts when you're working on your log litter go to our online store Check out all the stuff we got. We got new shirts too. We got the, uh, the dinosaur juice one. Check them out. You need one of them because these things run on dinosaur juice. And Halloween's coming up. You need to get one of the limited edition Halloween tees or sweatshirts. We got both of them, a t-shirt and a sweatshirt because you know in the fall it gets a little chilly out. But if you're trick-or-treating in Florida, you're going to want a t-shirt. So here we got, this is cut out for an electric starter, that's a good sign. There's a hole in here in this bracket for the gas tank for an electric starter. So that's all promising that we're not going to run into any problems. Hook an electric starter up, put that stuff in my little magnetic tray. Carol, you're using the tray this time! Hooray! Hooray for the tray! Now let me uh, take these two screws out and this blower shroud should come off. Alright, so we're going to pull this off. We're going to need all this. So what I like to do on this style of brakes and scrap them engine when I pop the flywheel, I've got an old flywheel bolt that I like to use as a puller because I don't want to damage the one that I'm going to use on the engine. So I got one of these off a of junk mower years ago and I like to thread it in there. And use it like my own personal tool. And then on the back here, they got this little point that I like to pivot off of. Put some pressure on it. You gotta use a good, like four pound sledge and give it a good sharp blow right in the middle. May take a couple whacks. Sometimes you gotta turn the flywheel 180 degrees if it's, you know, giving you the flux. You know, this is all bent up and stuff from doing that. So, keep that in mind. Now I can pull this off. I'm gonna save the flywheel key, and lo and behold, I was worried that these weren't gonna be underneath there. Cause some of these brakes and scrap them engines, there are no, uh, provisions like this so you can add electric start we get this all the time people come into the shop and they can you add electric start 
to my generator? It's like, no, that engine, you, you can't do that. It's got to already have it on there. So luckily this engine is already set up for all that. So we'll have to get this out of the way, this part. We'll just take it off all together. We don't need it. Even though now it'll be a good spot for a mouse to get in there. Gonna get fluffy in access. Maybe I'll just cut this off. We'll see. We gotta put the starter on there first. No, I think I gotta take this off all together. Put the alternator on. And I did notice on this donor flywheel that it's got an aftermarket ring gear. So some of you don't know that on some of these brakes and scrap them, if you got a bad ring gear, there's a ring gear kit you can buy. I think we got a video on it too that shows you how to replace that ring gear. You grind the studs off because it's riveted on, you drive them out, and you get this ring gear kit and you can bolt the new ring gear on. Another thing you're gonna wanna do if you're ever doing some kind of conversion like this, because I had another flywheel from another brakes and scrap them, which I thought was gonna work, but it didn't. You wanna line up your keyway and you wanna make sure that your magnet is in the same position. Cause I grabbed another flywheel, looked real similar to this, and I thought it was gonna work, but the magnet was like over here. And that's not gonna work cause your timing's gonna be way off. You'll never get it to start. So you gotta, you gotta check all this stuff and make sure. Now this uh, fan is a little beat up. So I'm gonna transfer this fan and this little metal part over to our donor flywheel because it's in a little better shape than this one. But first I need to uh, install that alternator and get this crap out of here. Whatever this is. Looks like a wood chip. Wonder how wood chips got in there. They got in there, Tara, because it's a log splitter, you knucklehead. Wood chips. I think I'm gonna eat a bag of them tonight. All right, now it's day two on the dog splitter. As you can tell, I'm wearing a different shirt. Our limited edition Halloween shirts. If you ain't got one, you need to get one. All right, so we got this all mounted. And the reason it was so janky before was I didn't have this pipe welded down solid. I only had it tacked on. So once I welded it solid, it stiffened everything up. And then I lowered this, I cut a little bit off of here and I moved it forward. So now when I wanna raise and lower it, my hand isn't gonna get whacked into there. So I mean, it's still a little janky, but you know, it's just for moving it around a little bit and to help you from having to struggle with picking it up and all that. So it'll be fine. It'll work fine for what I need it for. It's strong enough. So next, we're gonna move on to mounting the battery box. So I saved these old battery boxes when we junk mowers. Uh, the other one I did, I wish I had one of them, it was a little different, but this one will work. And then I had this uh, piece of scrap metal from a shelving unit. I got a bunch of pieces of this. So I cut a piece off and I'm gonna mount my push button in there. Here's my push button. I got from somewhere, I forgot there was a closeout sale on something and I bought a bunch of these, I got them real cheap. So I'll mount that push button in there. And then here's our solenoid, it's a Stenz. Three post solenoid, there's the part number in case you're interested. This one we got from our friends at propartsdirect.net. 
need any small engine parts, get them from Pro Parts. So this is a three post because it's got three posts. This is our trigger wire and it's got to be grounded. So that's going to go over here near the starter. So I'll drill and tap some holes and bolt that over there. I'm going to weld this over here for the push button and then I'm going to weld these two pieces of angle over here and then this battery box because it's got holes down here I'll turn it this way and I'll have that mounted over here then all I gotta do is run the wires to it I went out in the junkyard Found me a good use starter. I may have to change this. It's got the metal gear on it. I may have to change it to the plastic gear. The difference is the number of teeth. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. The plastic gear, I believe, has got 16 teeth. And then, you know, I got, well, about 8 teeth right here. So these teeth wouldn't work with these teeth. So I'll put the starter on, got to put the flywheel back on, so we'll be able to rope start it and start it electrically. Now I'm not using this alternator off of this one, because this one's got the green connector. This is a, an alternator from Brakes and Scrapple that's got to use a voltage regulator. I could hook this up, but then that's another thing, I, another part I've got to uh, wire in. I've got one, but I don't, I don't need to use it. We just need it to charge the battery. So I went out in the junkyard and I got this alternator off another junk engine. That's the nice thing about brakes and scrapple is all these different alternators will interchange. So I went out and got this one. That's got the diode in it. We're only going to use this red wire. This other wire, this black wire, that's AC voltage. That would have been for headlights. So I'm just going to use this one. I got it mounted already. And then we got to route the wires down here between where the starter is going to bolt. This was the bracket. The gas tank bracket that mounted. And if you notice, it's got, it's raised up right here. So between this, and where's that other piece I was kicking around? And this piece, these two pieces are about the thickness of this. So I'll probably just grind this flat. Or I could just put longer bolts in it. It's really not going to matter that much because it's just for the for the gas tank bracket. I'll probably just leave it alone and just put longer bolts in. But that's where we're at for that. So I got to get all that stuff mounted. And then one other thing I was thinking about that I don't like when I'm splitting wood with this thing, when I've got it in a vertical position. When I got it up like this, and I got a big log, not, not like the big log when I take a dump, a bigger log. <laughs> you know, you, you may have experienced this too. You put a big log up here, and you only got this part of the foot, so then the log kind of wants to sit at an angle, you know what I mean? When you put it on there, it's like that. And it would be nice to have something that would kind of hold it up so you don't have to kind of hold, push on it and split it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these pieces of angle iron to the side here. 
And then I'm going to add this other one probably like this. I'll weld this in. So that way when you got a big log on there, it'll hold it up. Because when you're pushing on the wood, you know, we're not going to be putting a lot of pressure on this. So it's not going to be, it's going to be mainly concentrating in this area. So I'm going to put this on and try it, see how it works. And if it bends it all up, then I'll cut it off. But I didn't want to put a big, big plate of steel on here because it's going to probably change the, the weight of it when you go to tilt it back and forth, trying to keep it light. So I'm going to try this, weld this on there. And then when I split some big logs, I'll see how well it works. So that's where we're at. Now I got to get busy welding all these parts on. Okay, I got all those brackets welded on and I gave it a little lick of paint and then of course the spray can messed up and so I got to get some more paint to finish it. So now I can mount my my push button and I got my battery box ready to go. All I got to do is drill and tap some holes, I'll put some self tappers in there. And then I had to uh, change the gear. Like I was telling you, from the metal gear to the plastic gear to get it to mesh correctly. So whenever you're doing a starter or changing the starter on your lawnmower, if you buy a starter, say you buy one off of Scamazon or eBay, if you got the metal gear, you got to have the metal gear starter. If you got the plastic gear, you got to have the plastic gear starter. Again, there's a different number of teeth. And if you don't have the right starter gear, you know, it's going to chew things up. Because I had a guy tell me that he went to a mower shop and he said, you sold me the wrong starter. And all you got to do is swap the gears and he goes, oh no, you can't do that. You can't swap the gears. The starters are different. They're totally different. No, they're not. All you got to do is swap the gear. And this is a guy that owns a lawnmower shop and he doesn't know this. So I got the plastic gear on there. And I've got the starter hooked up. So now we're going to crank it over. So now all we have to do is wire it up. Wire it up, wire it up, wire it up, wire it up. Shut up! Now he's the wire it up guy. All right, so I'm gonna mount the solenoid like I said. I wanted to wait until I got the starter on so I can figure out the exact location where I'm gonna mount this solenoid. Somewhere over here, I want it out of the way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a short wire cable, battery cable from here to there. Then another one from here to the positive of the battery. And then I'm also gonna take the wire here that's got the, the diode in it, which is the red wire. I'm gonna run that to the same side that goes right to the battery. So it'll charge the battery. So I can I can run that wire here or I can run it right to the battery, but I'm gonna run it here. Then I'm also, for the push button, gonna have to run a wire off of here, the same thing, positive of the battery, to one of the terminals on the push button. Now this has got three connections on it. I've already marked it. These are the two terminals I need to use because it's a switch. All we're going to do is push the button and it's going to make a connection. So I'm going to run a red wire from here to one of the terminals on here, then the other red wire from here 
is going to run to here. You got that? So I'm going to run off positive off the battery because we need power to the switch. And then off this other one I marked, that wire is going to go to here. So when I push the button, it's going to make a connection and we're going to actually send 12 volts from here to here and it's going to start cranking the motor over. Pretty simple. And then I got to run a, uh, a negative from here to ground, which I'll just ground it to the frame somewhere. And I'll probably just go out in the junkyard and grab some cables, some old cables off of some junk mowers, and then just cut them and crimp some new ends on there. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to mount this, start running my wires. I can put my blower shroud and everything back on, put my gas tank back on, and then, uh, then we're finished. Other than I gotta get some more paint because I want to paint all that metal. I might even paint this all the way too, I don't know. We'll see how ambitious I get. So I have a ton of these metal gears, so that's going in the garbage. I don't need that one. Alright, we're almost done. Just gotta drill some holes and put some stuff back on and you don't need to see all that putting it all back together. You know how it goes together. It's nuts and bolts, that's all it is. Nuts and bolts. Okay, got engine all back together, recoil everything back on. Battery box mounted. The battery, got the switch on. I found a plug with just the red wire that we need because we're not gonna use the other wire. That I can plug into the alternator. I found a good cable with a fuse. I forgot we, we should have a fuse in there. So I can run this from the battery and then this will go to the solenoid. I can shorten this wire up and then this will go to here with the fuse and then I'll run the other wire to the solenoid I've got my negative cable, a piece of cable here. I've got all my lugs that I can crimp on. So I'll come up through here with a lug. I'll crimp a lug on there. And then somewhere over here, I'll drill a hole. And that's where we'll ground it. And then over here, Come over here, Mr. Cameraman. I had a short cable in my scrap wire that I got. So I figured I'll put the solenoid right here away from the drain. So that way if you want to drain the oil. So all I got to do is put a lug on there. And I already marked it. So now with my handy dandy center punch which I got from my cousin Gerald. I love this center punch. If you don't have one of these center punches you need to get one. I don't know where he got it from. You can probably find it on the inner screen. But this thing is awesome. Especially in tight spots like this. And then if you want you can also hit it with a hammer. So now I'll drill and mount this. And then uh Make all my connections, and that'll be it. All right, I got the solenoid mounted. Got this wire hooked up. Got my charge wire ready to go. Now I'm gonna run this battery cable to here. So that's where I want it. So I'm gonna cut it. Cut this off. We'll take this off. And I'll show you how I crimp an end on there with my crimpers. I got my spider knife from Dennis Cullen. You know, I met a lot of, a lot of nice people named Dennis from doing this channel. Dennis Cullen, who gave me the knife. My friend Dennis Cotiver in Ohio and his lovely wife, Colleen. 
and my other friend, Dennis Frazy. Crazy Frazy, we call him. So a lot of good people I know and met through the channel named Dennis. Get that off. Got a lug here. The lug on there. Got my crimper. And there's your dinner. Put that on there. Sure, it's tight. Good connection. All right, so I'm gonna. I don't want to use a spade connector on there, so I want to take this off. I want to make sure that that wire don't come off from vibration or anything when we're log splitting or dog splitting. So I made up that wire ahead of time. I used 14 gauge wire for this, our trigger wire, you can call it. We put that lock washer on there, they gave me with it. This is what I did on that other splitter that I converted. The same splitter with the Tecumish. And I wanted to make sure I had a good positive. Then I'll run this around to our push button. Here's our fuse. I shortened up that wire. Put a butt connector on there. I want to run it through this case. So I'm going to take my step bit. So I can get this through. Hopefully I made the hole big enough. If not, I can make it bigger with step bit. That way I can keep my fuse in this battery box. Then I'm gonna connect that to the other side. That's what we want. Good tight connection. Now I can close the lid on this. It should lock down. Now all I gotta do is hook this up. Now, I use these self-threading or self-tapping screws. A lot of you maybe know about this already, some of you don't. See how it's triangular shaped on the end, like a triangle? That's a self-threading screw. We steal these off a lot of junk mowers when we junk, junk them. I like to use these. And I drill a 7 30 seconds hole. And then it's good to put a little lubricant on it to help it thread in. See, and it makes its own threads. That's for those of you who don't know. We're all hooked up. So now when I hit this button, it should crank the motor over. Woo! Put it on fast, pull the choke. Now I got electric start. 
on my dog sweater. Oh. Oh. What the heck happened here? Let's see if it's charging the battery. Put it on DC. Oh, gas is off. <laughs> Turn the gas off. All right, Woo. had me worried there for a minute. Woo. There's our dinner. That's why I use that other alternator. See, if I would've used the one with the voltage regulator, it would've been instantaneous, like 13 and a half, 14 volts. But for this, you know, when you're running a log splitter, it takes a little longer for it to get up there because it's a lower amp alternator. But when you're splitting wood, you know, you're not gonna be shutting it off and turning it on like every 10 seconds or every couple of minutes, you're going to be running it so it's going to be charging the battery. That's why I thought that other alternator would be better to use and uh, that way I didn't have to hook up a, a regulator. That's another part that may, something may happen to it. So now, you're probably going to want to see it split wood and stuff. So well, it's late again. You can see it's dark now. Working late. So I'm gonna go out to Podunk Ranch where I live and bring in a big piece of wood to the shop here and we'll split some wood with it so y'all can see it split wood. But it's late now. And uh, I got three cats waiting at home that want their dinner. Mom, old blade, and bucket. They're probably wondering, where's Daddy at? Where's he at? We want our dinner. What's he making stupid videos again? We don't care about those stupid videos. We want our dinner. So there you have it. There's my upgrades that I've been wanting to do on my dog splitter. Because I'm a cat person. No, I'm a dog person too. So what do you think? Added this, added this. I have to get some more paint. Touch all this up. Stiffen that up, added our little wheel. Try to make it easier for old people like me to move this thing around. I'm not as young as I used to be. Look at that, that'll be nice when I'm out at Podunk Ranch splitting wood, be able to move it around, crank it up, hook it to the held hauler, which I've already done, because I've already split some wood at Podunk Ranch, and uh, had to move this thing around with the held hauler, loaded all that firewood in the back, yeah. All right, so the next time you see me, we'll be splitting some wood. Woo! Trying to make it easier on everybody. That's nice. I like that. Look at that. Woo! Now the battery's dead, we can always give it a yank.
Hey, yeah! Woo! Yeah! Woo! All right, let's test this thing out. Let's see all these modifications, how well it works. So the first thing we want to look at is my, my jack with the wheel on it. And we're in gravel. And now it moves real smooth and easy. So I got some logs here. Not the kind that float in the toilet. These are tree logs. So let's first... Split and try out my little cradle I made. So let's... So what do, what do we say when we start something? Fire it up! Fire it up! Fire it up! Yeah, let's fire it up! pick it up and split it again that worked out well so now I unhooked it and if you notice I changed the little clevis that was on there and I hooked it to a chain because I know this thing is going to get lost so this was another little add-on I did because I had a quick pin in there and that thing was all bent up all right let's flip it up big old hunks of wood here and yeah see it sits on there nice and flat now I like it Well, that's it. I'm happy with all the improvements I made on this hog splitter. I may do one other little improvement, and that's I may mount this little chair on here somewhere. 
So that way when I'm going to do some splitting, I'll have my handy dandy little Terrell Star chair to sit on when you're sitting there splitting vertically. So, subscribe to this YouTube channel, Terrell Fixes All. I'm Terrell with Elkskin. Go to our web store, buy some of our merchandise, like our latest edition, the Dinosaur Juice shirt. You need to get one of these. This isn't white, it's like an off tan. It's a nice shirt. Another thing we got are mouse pads for your computer when you're on the inner screen. And we have three different photos, all of me, none with elk skins. Oh darn. Oh look, this is the one I like. Yeah, look at that. Riding a wheelie on the wheelie horse. Follow me and elk skins. Come on, turn around and start running. You got a ladybug on your neck. Oh well. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram with your hog splitters. And as always, what do I say, Elskins? There's your dinner. There's your dinner. Woo! Made some improvements to the log splitter. I can't believe you destroyed my seat. Sit on this one. <laughs> Put my gloves in there. Yeah, I'm happy with the, how it turned out. I was gonna do this a long time ago. And now I finally did it, and I'm happy with how it turned out. Maybe you could do it to yours, too. All right, let's get this wood in the back of my truck. Okay. I just wanted to see what it was. Get down from there! Oh. This is an old building, and it makes a lot of noises. I knew you two weren't gonna listen, that's why I had to come back here. Now there's no reason to go up there. Stay down here and go to sleep. All right, we're sorry, we're going to sleep. Come on, let's go, let's go later. Good night! Do we still get the free continental breakfast? Only if you stay out of that parks room. Oh. All right, well. We better stay out of there. Okay, so I guess I'll lay on this oil stain. If you want the oily rag back there. Oh, 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 oh. oh it's just the air compressor. Oh. What was that? Huh. Oh, what was what? There was a noise. Oh. 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 There it is. Oh. That's it. I gotta see what's up there. I'm going up there. Well, what about the continental breakfast? Screw the continental breakfast. I gotta see what's up there. Huh? 
Oh, just some ungrateful stranded travelers. Ah, I thought I saw someone pop up there for a second while I was working on the heating duct. I told them not to go up there because I knew you was working up there. But of course, nobody listens. And I was just getting ready to fire up that hot plate and give them a free continental breakfast. Oh well. Hey Junior, how do you like your powdered eggs? Extra soupy, Pa. You want me to make the toast? <laughs> yeah, just what I thought. That's my boy.